Hi, I'm Gary Parker, owner of the Wine Cellar Brasserie here in San Diego, California. Hi, Myers McDougall, the sommelier for the brasserie upstairs, and uh, what do we have today? Uh, today we have uh, another entry from La Ventura. This is the 2006 Optimus. Uh, we had La Ventura in our wine club uh, last year, and it was a resounding hit. So we decided to uh, bring it back this year, and you know we got our supply back in. The, 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 the wine's been released, and so here we are. Uh, with another opportunity to try this very, very uh, special project that was set up by a gentleman by the name of Stephen Aceo, uh, who uh, parents hailed from the Bordeaux region of France, and he wanted to make wines in his own style. And because uh, the French laws are so uh, restrictive about what you can put in a, a wine in, in an area that you're growing it in, he decided he was going to take his show on the road. He uh, looked all over the, the planet. He was in Lebanon and South Africa. Argentina, Sonoma, Napa, and finally settled in San Luis Obispo so he could make a wine that was multi uh, varietal. Yeah, like this one is half cab, 45% Syrah, and 5% uh, Petit Verdot, I believe is the other one. And he could do whatever he wants to do, you know. And I think he's doing it pretty well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is a, a very, very special bottle of wine, and um, it, it reminds me of um, uh, some of the wines I tasted when I was in Argentina. For the for the depth and the richness and the, and the power that that uh, that's displayed here, definitely lives up to its name. Woo! Yeah, Full-bodied Californian cab Syrah blend. I, I I don't know if I would call the Syrah by blind taste of this. I I get the oak and I get the the Cabernet, but you know just from the nose. Um, I can taste some integrated fruit, but uh, you know you can tell he's really trying to, to make a wonderful full bottle wine. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point because uh, oftentimes when uh, uh, Syrah is used or Syrah on its own has that underbrush black olive kind of character, mm -hmm. and this I don't get. Into that. No, and the color too. You usually see that nice little uh, hue of purple, and it does stain the glass pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I can't really call that purple in 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 the wine. I would probably say it looks a lot like a Cabernet to me. But, yeah. Um, well, it plus it's uh, 2006, so you know purple kind of dies off in a bottle for after a year. Or oh two. yeah. Yeah. Um. You know, it's a good uh, point. Is we've been talking about all the um, wine club wines for uh, January, and we've just gone through tasting uh, uh, Pouillac and Fronsac and a lot of great Bordeaux. And one of the things that comes up in uh, time and time again is celery. And um, you know, a lot of times for California wines, you don't think about celery as much as Bordeaux. But I think this is a fun wine to sell. It. You know, it's a cool blend. Uh, the producer, even though he's got that he's got that Bordeaux background, doesn't mean we have to sell it because he's got that background. But I think that with the Syrah and from what I'm smelling, it's a big wine. It's 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 full bodied, and I think in uh, seven to ten years, it can turn into something that's really elegant. It's elegant now, but the finesse, you know, I think will be a little bit more integrated in a couple of years. What do you think? Well stated. Yeah. I would uh, I'd be really quite happy to have a box or two of this in my cellar, um, just because of the the, the, the intrigue of the, of the blend of the two and the, the richness that the wine has and the, uh, the vertical posture of the wine. It, it says that I'm going to be around for a long time and, and uh, I, I just know that uh, it gained complexity. It's beautiful now and it is complex now and it's rich and powerful but um, uh, it's, it's also really quite, quite fun to have a wine that's taken on, that's, that's taken on these uh, aging complexities. Where, where everything kind of just smooths out and gets mellow, and it's you know it's kind of like me now, you know just kind of like, not quite twilighting, but everything's okay. You yeah. know, it's not like in your face. Smooth jazz. <laughs> no, 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 no. no not just smooth jazz. Yeah, okay. No way. No way. <laughs> Well, this is the Gary Parker collection wine too, so this is one of your group, and uh, I think it's great. Yeah, it is, and so for the price of thirty-eight dollars suggested, I think it's forty-five or fifty at the winery actually. So this is a, a really good price for four hundred bucks. You could buy a case of this and put it away uh, in your cellar, not just drink it in one night, put it away. Um, <laughs> I could put it away. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably probably good. But an outstanding selection. My nephew, um, I don't, I think they do not give tours per se. Uh, but I sent my nephew up there, and uh, he called him, and they gave him a wonderful, wonderful visit while he was there. And he was—he's a, he's a pretty sharp kid, and he was pretty well enamored with, with the whole place. Um, uh, but, but it's very, very special. If you 
wherever you see this label, and yeah, you won't see it around very much, you, you know you have a quality product when you're buying a lot of tour wine. One little last note, uh, February 24th, the Wine Cellar Brasserie is doing a Paso Robles Wine Alliance dinner, and uh, the winemaker, uh, Stephen's actually going to be here with his wine, and we're going to pair that with uh, Chef Matt's cuisine, so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, if you need a reservation, call ahead, and uh, please uh, come and see us. That's 858-4509-557. Uh, Cheers. Cool. Cheers.